Greetings, and welcome back to our continuing series about how to optimize your BigQuery spends. Today, we'll be talking about how you can use BigQuery storage more effectively and make sure that you're getting both the best performance and price for that performance. As a reminder, BigQuery architecture is composed of two parts. First, we have our fully separated storage and compute layers. So what that really means is that for all the data that we store, we only use the compute when we need it. This allows us to do things like store materializations of different queries at a relatively low cost while keeping our compute spend down. All of this traverses our petabit network for the most and best cost optimization and price for performance. Let's start digging into the storage layer today to understand its features and then how we can best optimize it. First, from a billing perspective, it's important to note that there are two options for how to bill. You can use both the logical model or the physical model. In the logical model, you're billed for the logical representation of a table or data sets and tab tables within the data set. This includes things like a logical representation of an integer field. In this model, things like time travel are included. So you're not paying additional for additional storage in, in this model outside of what the logical table representation is. In the physical model, you pay for all physical storage of the, of the data and the related assets, including things like the data that's actually stored for time travel. This option is usually used if you have data that compresses well, and typically users see a little bit of a benefit from using this from a cost perspective. Next thing to note in this is how you can use time travel to better configure how much data you actually store over time. Time travel is configurable between two and seven days. What this means is that we will store snapshots of all of your data between the two and seven day window. So if you needed to go back and say restore data from six days ago, if you had a time travel window of seven days, you would be able to do that. The incremental storage in this is billed in the physical model, but not in the logical model. Next, let's talk about all the different types of things that are actually denoted in table storage. First, the standard things like tables, snapshots, and materialized views are actually billed based on the bytes that are actually consumed or the logical bytes consumed by those resources. We don't bill for things like cache query results or when storage is consumed by things like external tables where the billing is actually performed by the object store that the data resides in. All right. So let's talk about how we can optimize these different storage concepts and really make things best for you as the developer or the administrator in this process. First, things to consider is using table snapshots. This lets you create copies of tables without actually having to physically copy the data into a new table for that. In this example, we can see that we have a base table where we've created a snapshot and we're not actually billing for the snapshot until we have changes to the base table that then constitute storage from a different block. Here you can see that the only things that we're billing for are the new and change pieces of the data set or the deltas from the snapshot table to the base table. This is very similar for another concept called table clones. Clones also allow us to snapshot a table at a specific point in time and then only the base table and the clone are billed for the incremental or change data in each of those models. Another way to consider getting the best performance out of your storage and also your compute is to consider using partitions and clustering as a part of your storage strategy. As a quick reminder, partitioning and, and clustering work very similarly, but partitioning gives you an additional benefit that you can use something called active or long-term storage to get different benefits from your data. In the active or long-term pricing model, what happens is if a partition or a table does not get modified in 90 days or greater, we'll actually give you a 50% discount on the storage of that object. Here you can see a quick example that once the 90-day window has been reached and there's been no inserts, updates, or deletes against that table, we shift it over to the long-term model. And this does not have any difference in performance, durability, or availability of that data any select queries will continue to work just as they were in the past. Note that if you change the table, let's say you have to add additional data once it's, it's in long-term, it will automatically flip back to active and there's no additional maintenance you need to perform as a developer in that. Last thing to consider is thinking about how you can use time to live on different assets. 
we allow you to configure time to live on any table. And what this essentially means is that you can auto expire tables out or partitions out based on some time to live value. This makes it easy so you don't have to continuously monitor your different tables or take care of different data within those tables and let the system work for you. We hope that you've enjoyed this quick demonstration and overview of how you can use BigQuery storage and optimize different components of storage for your use cases. Happy querying!